As agreed, Shayla made her way to the burial mound at daybreak, armed lightly with just a few daggers. It was unwise to ever be completely unarmed in the Knoxwell, regardless of who you were or your familiarity with it. Holly was already waiting and bowed her head at the approach. Well met to the given. Well met by moonlight. Have there been any developments? Holly shook her head, her hair reminding Shayla of a willow in the wind. It has claimed no more children than it had before and has made no motion to act beyond the borrow. It stands there at the pinnacle. Anytime the children attempt to escape or someone uninvited attempts to intervene, it becomes somewhat hostile. Shayla assessed the area. It was a rather impressive mound, likely from times long forgotten, as there is no obvious indication that it isn't merely a hill. Perhaps the reappearance of the dragons disturbed the spirits lingering here. There is the smell of sulfur on the wind here. Perhaps a few miles towards Cleona's tears? She made a mental note to investigate that at a later time. For now, the ghost was the immediate task at hand. Before approaching it, Shayla took a moment to walk the outside of the mound, sharpening some of the branches at the very edge to begin marking for the barricade. That'll keep Holly a busy for a time at any rate. Once she had made it back to the start, she pulled her game pouch off her belt and stepped her toes to the very edge of the ghost's domain. Halia did as expected and went to retrieve materials for the makeshift construction. The children at the top of the mound seemed somewhat malnourished, one being a small red cap, one being a kelpie of some kind, and the third looked nearly human save for the frost glistening through their skin like glass. An unexpected trio in an unexpected place, but she wasn't here to pass that sort of judgment. Teasing the border of the mound with her toes, Shayla reached her closed hand into the boundary. As suspected, the ghost appeared, floating down towards her. It was not yet angry, simply making its presence known. This ghost appeared to be young, perhaps in her late teens, early twenties, a white tunic dress covering her translucent form. A lady in white. Shayla could already feel the tug in the back of her mind to ask her question as she turned her closed hand over and opened to reveal six runic coins. Would you like to play a game? The girl looked at her, then to the coins, shaking her head slowly. I wish to keep the children. They will die if I don't. Shayla pocketed the coins. They will surely die if they don't feed as well. You have captured younglings who do not seem capable of self-sufficiency as of yet. The lady in white looked at the children, then back, a sad, determined, conflicting expression nodding her otherwise plain face. Yes, they do try to leave. But they do not understand. The dragons, they will kill them. I understand you are afraid. Tell me your story and I will offer you something in return. Shayla wasn't sure yet what that something would be, but she knew the tale would provide the insight she would need to make a fair trade. The white lady took a moment to look upon Shayla and the toe that persisted on being just on the edge of her territory. The dragons, they killed my husband in return to kill my child. I wasn't there for either. My son was with my mother as I gathered some flowers and offerings for his father's grave. I couldn't keep them safe, and now the beasts return once more. Shayla looked over the young woman, seeing no signs of burn or severe dismemberment. Her exact form of death must have been more subtle, perhaps heartbreak or poison. The story told her as much as she could determine necessary for a trade, if little else. Indicating to the mound, Shayla inquired, Are all of your loved ones here? The spirit nodded, a moment away from tears. Shayla couldn't understand these types of spirits, but knew what they usually wanted. I will gather some offerings from nearby if it pleases you, for your lost spouse, and for the lost child, a doll. In return, I must insist on taking the living children to their guardians, so they do not suffer a loss as you have. The spirit took her time to mull it over, and Shayla waited. The Kelpie-looking child seemed especially distressed. Though they appeared somewhat elfish, their hair resembled seaweed, and the sun was damaging it to a degree Shayla had not seen before. She wasn't sure if the child would fully recover, but she wasn't familiar with the intricacies of the water-reliant fae. About an hour or so later, the ghost returned and nodded. I accept these terms. Then I shall return quickly. Shayla spent the better part of the day, with Holly's guidance as she knew better about such things, gathering suitable offerings for the lost loved ones and fashioning a passable doll out of twigs, pine cones, and some cloth Shayla ripped off her own clothing. By the time Shayla was ready to present them to the spirit, the sun was finishing its travel for the day. Spirit granted Shayla entry into her domain with a gesture. 
The air gave her a sense of sadness, a weight on her chest she wasn't keen on feeling ever again after this. Reaching the top of the mound, she placed the offerings purposefully before acknowledging the children and trying very hard to ignore her compulsion for just a few more moments. Children, say goodbye to the lady. She meant you no harm. The children did as instructed and tried to flee, but Shayla was quicker. The red cap failing was still rather feisty despite the circumstances, but the other two were in no condition to fight the grip on their ragged clothing. We will be respectful of the lady's domain and walk out. To the spirit, she said, We bid you good evening, spirit. Once clear of the mound and the makeshift spike barricade Halia was finishing up, Shayla dropped to the level of the children and asked, Would any of you like to play a game? Immediately, the pressure growing in her body relaxed, letting out a caught breath. The children didn't seem to notice and stared at her. The frost-skinned child nodded. Good. We're going to play the quiet game until you are returned. If you win, I will hunt your dinner for you. Starting now. Despite their best efforts and Halia's direct path to their respective guardians, the red cap was the first to break, followed shortly by the frost-skinned child's laughter. The Kelpie managed to hold out until the edge of their territory, but broke out in dry tears before reaching their mother. As the children lost the game, Shayla was under no obligation to hunt for them and simply left them to their respective guardians. Halia was a great help in this victory, as she was the one who physically delivered the children to allow Shayla the opportunity to remain silent and not ask her question of all the parents. And that completed, Shayla headed home once more. All in all, a good day for the Jackal of Noctum Caligo.